Uh, this is the uh, <coughs> February 27th, uh, 2013 City Council Finance Subcommittee meeting. I'm Councillor Hagen, Councillor Cobb, and Councillor Risk. Um, first item on the agenda is uh, minutes from the prior meeting. I'll make a motion that we accept the minutes from the prior meeting. I'll second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Stay. Uh, mayor's communication. The mayor said he could not be here tonight. Public speak. Anyone have something they uh, want to speak to other than that's on the agenda? So I think everyone's here for agenda items. As I said, all uh, the conversations and the video are being recorded, and you can watch them at some later point on the ECAD system if you're so, so inclined. Uh, yeah, we're going to go out of order. Um, I want to start with uh, Chief uh, McMahon because uh, I know Councilor Risk wasn't here, but we did have uh, some preliminary discussions on the two Mark police cruisers in the city computer networking. and. Uh, uh, we just wanted to bring uh, the department's head in for a couple of additional questions. So we'll do the police uh, two unmarked vehicles first and then uh, move on to the city computers. So that would be C and then B. Um, uh, what Chief McMahon is looking for is, uh, or what the mayor and Chief McMahon are looking for, are two new mark cruisers, I believe, Chief. Right. Yes. Um, and to upgrade you, Dan, what the the chief wants to do, and it's, uh, I don't know if it was in the paper, Northampton did it, is they're thinking of going to a small, like I'll say a mid-sized SUV, would that be fair, or is it yeah, fair? Yeah, it'd be, it'd be, if, if you want, I've got a short. Sure, uh, it, absolutely, it, I was just, you. Um, rather than a traditional cruiser, so I'll right. turn it over to the chief and he can explain what the Sounds difference is. Sure. So what, what happened is Fort uh, Crown Vic is no longer uh, being manufactured, they discontinued that last year, so we can't get Crown <coughs> Victoria. So what Ford came up with is they came up with two purpose-built vehicles. They have the uh, Ford Interceptor sedan and the Ford Interceptor utility vehicle. Uh, they're built solely for police use. A uh, consumer cannot go out and buy one. They were actually designed by police officers for police officers. Uh, the doors open up wider. There's the equipment that we need in them. Um, they're pursuit rated. They have all, all heavy duty equipment. Uh, both the sedan uh, and the utility vehicle utilize between 32 and 35 percent less fuel at idle, as we all know, than one than a Crown Vic. As we all know, uh, our cruisers idle considerably, you know, at accident scenes, things like that. So they're using between 32 and 35 percent less fuel at idle, and both the sedan and the utility vehicle achieve approximately 20 percent better fuel economy than the Crown Victoria. Um, so they were purpose built. Uh, to answer Councillor Cobb's uh, question, was there a containment module in it? Yes, there is. And on the uh, brochure that I handed out, there's a uh, brochure from the council that was somewhere in the file. Mm -hmm. uh, there, that is the containment uh, module that we're looking at on uh, the, I believe it's the fourth page. Yep. Um, so you can put two yeah, prisoners in the back. One the like there's this. That's not the one seater we're looking at. Uh, it's different, but we're looking at the two seat right here. And if we do go to the one seat, that would not be the one we'd be looking at. It's a little bit different. Than which, that. which one of these you're, you're getting in? Right? Correct. Correct. The, I'll, I'll inject. What I saw at the end was that the sedan uh, had a, um, a let's say a prisoner containment module available. It was a nice one, very similar to what right. we have. I couldn't find that for the actual utility vehicle. That's why I wanted to call up because that's the way. A lot of cities have, uh, for lack of a better term, paddy wagon that they transport their prisoners. Uh, we don't. No. We do that in the back of our cruisers. Yes. Right. But you do have one for the SUV. Right. Did, yeah. There will be one for the SUV that, that is already into the spec sheet that was already included into the price. I believe it was around $895 to do that contained module in there. Uh, another question is the there's an $1,800 trade allowance per cruiser that we're trading in. That's a set price set by MHQ. Uh, the cars that we're trading in are both 2008. Uh, car 6 has about 142,000 miles on it, has a very poor uh, repair record, and car number 8 is well over 100,000, uh, but the odometer broke. We know it's over 100,000, but we don't know how much over 100,000. Uh, so they're both in poor repair, and I'm not sure that one car is going to actually make it there uh, by itself. It might have to be on a flatbed. 
So and they're still going to give you eighteen hundred. They'll still give us eighteen hundred. Well, they get that for scrap. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, the reason that we opted for the utility vehicle over the interceptor, and we were at a show, and these cars are both really in high demand, so we were not able to get them for any period of time to test them. However, I did drive both, as did a couple other officers. Uh, the pricing difference is very minimal. It's less than a thousand dollars between one uh, between the SUV and the sedan. Uh, they're virtually the same fuel economy. There was about two miles per gallon difference in the SUV over the sedan. There's much more usable space, interior space, uh, easier access and egress out of the SUV. They were both purpose-built vehicles for uh, police riggers. They handle well. Everything is um, uh, high output, and it's, it's built for police use. The reason, one of the main reasons we opted away from the sedan is there's very poor rear visibility when backing up, and Ford itself suggests that you opt into a backup camera for the car to be able to actually see your quarters. And these cars already have a laptop in them, three radio systems, and a variety of electronics, including a radar unit. The last thing that we need is a backup camera to be added to all that stuff. Um, Plus, we live in New England, and a sport utility vehicle for almost the same price with the same fuel economy makes a whole lot more sense than a, uh, a sedan would ever make uh, in New England. Um, but do you lose anything? I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Wait till you're done. No, don't no, go right ahead. Do you lose any capability from the Crown Vic to this vehicle in pursuit? No. Actually, you have horsepower. You have this is better. Better. Okay. This is actually That's better. What I want to hear. It actually in the uh, in the fuel. water mile and in the mile run, it's faster. Than, both are faster than the Crown Vic. It's all-wheel drive. In cornering and in braking, it's better. Crash test rating was the same. So all in all, it is a much better package than what we're currently using in the Crown Vic. So that's why we opted for the uh, the SUV. We called around to numerous departments that do have these, and we got very positive reviews. Everybody loves them. Uh, I have a friend that works in the state police and fleet, and he said that basically they're ordering two SUVs to one sedan because they like them that much better. I don't even know why you'd have anything but an SUV. Exactly. It's above the ground. Do you, yep. do you have four-wheel drive? Yeah, all-wheel drive. All-wheel all drive. All -wheel drive. All -wheel drive. But yes. you're, you're going to move a lot better than a Crown Vic in a, in a snow. Absolutely. Absolutely. Snow, rain, What's the downside on this? There is none that I can see. I think with the cost is a little higher than a Crown Vic? It's, uh, well, there is no more Crown Vic. It's either that yeah. so, SUV or this well, new one. You, right you said $1,000 more. That's it's not even $1,000 more. One of the other elements is not only is uh, is this a Ford which our mechanics are familiar with? Right. A lot of the parts are, are still very, very, very similar between the, that and the sedan. So the, the idea is this. There was no downside that I could see in going to a sedan versus the utility vehicle. There was absolutely not at all. Not at all. I, oh, the the questions I have is on the existing yep. cruisers, yep. Uh, I don't know what evolution we were in in, in the, some of the lighting packages. And stuff. Yep. That's why I was asking, are we going to try to claim any of that stuff? Can't. On, on the lighting, we can't for the simple reason it's a totally different design car. What we did in the past on the last four or five cruisers, we were able to swap out light bars. We're going to still swap out the radar units and things like yeah. that. But as far as the lighting package, there's different mirrors, different width to um, the, yeah. the roof line, yeah. and you can't swap that stuff out. What we will be able to do is if we decide to stay with the SUV in the future, we'll be able to swap from SUV to SUV. Yeah, it's just like the Crown Vix, when they change year, sometimes the components don't match up and you can't get the same thing. I understand. The, uh, I, I did uh, contact the Northampton Police Department and I got no response. I was trying to actually get a visual on the vehicle yeah. so I get an idea of, because I know like the, the, uh, the uh, my experience with the Charger and the Impala, right. and we did that, was the bars on the windows were actually, were vision, they impaired your vision right. in a cruiser and looking at some of our guys and the equipment, you know, they have to sit way pretty far back, and that's why the prompt that made, made a lot of sense. And I was trying to get a, a sense of, of that um, in this vehicle, because I was looking at can we go to the city and see him may or may not have a problem, but uh, I got more. So I did go on online. I 
could watch the videos, but I know that's all sales pitch to us. Having, having, I, I sat and actually I drove both for very limited. I wasn't able to take it on onto a track. It was basically yeah. drive around the corner and bring it back. And um, I like the visibility much better in the SUV out of all 360. The sedan, the visibility is great looking forward, and it's great looking right and left. It is horrendous behind you. You can't see your corners of your car. Like the Charger. Just like the Charger. The angle of the rear window comes down at such a slope that it makes it look like your rear window is only about six inches high. That's not a good thing. And when they recommend putting in a backup camera. Have you heard, Bruce, at all from Northampton? Only because I know you said you heard from the state police, but their mission's slightly different. I mean, there was a lot yep. more highway than inside yes. cities yep. and smaller streets. Have they? They, they, they like I, I haven't seen one on the street. Just um, going through, I've seen. They, I don't know how much they're using them. Bob Moriarty is in charge of the fleet over there. He does a lot of their fleet stuff, and uh, I spoke to them. And so far, although they're relatively young, they haven't had them. They're very, very happy with them. They like them a lot. And uh, other departments, and you know, like the troopers that are in the area that are responsible for like going up to Russell and, and, and up that way. They absolutely love them. They, they handle really well. It's a really nice ride. It's great visibility. And uh, it's, it's a much better package. You get good room. Any other questions, Council? I'm just catching up on the uh, Take day on one of the options, the ballistic panels for the doors. We didn't after the ballistic panels. 39,000 per vehicle. Uh, this says 43, but that's redu I, reducing on the trade. What, what happened is, yeah, on, on the 43 where it said I eliminated, they eliminated radar and other things like that. Some things that you can right. you can actually transfer. And to give you an idea. So that's where we get the 78, 39. Per yeah. Per okay. Per what we paid, what the council approved for our last Crown Vic was 39385 Yeah, yeah that's what you that, approved yeah. for the last Crown Vic. So. You're not spending any more money than now. Actually, it's better because if he's paid 39 last time, you would be paying more now. It's, it's going to be a price increase, and that's was the last time you bought a Crown Vic. Uh, last year. Last, last year. But just which brings yeah. up the, the last question. Yeah. Uh, just so you know, one, one of the things I do know is we, 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 we established years ago when we first started our finance to try to get into a replenishment cycle. Right. You know, I remember that. being penny wise and penny foolish. And uh, so it was, it was one and two, one and two, one and two. For the most part, we, we've stuck with that. We're a little behind. Uh, last year, you, you were able to get a cruiser on, and I used the term road money, and that's not the right term. Yeah, yeah it, is. it is. It is the right term. What, what happened was they knew that uh, there was not a lot of money available to purchase cruisers, so we have a drug forfeiture fund. And what I ended up doing is I opted, because we were really in desperate need, is I opted to take $39,000 out of drug forfeiture or somewhere thereabouts to purchase a cruiser so it wouldn't have to come out of the city because I knew we weren't going to get one from the city and we really needed a car back. So you know where the follow-up is going to be? Do you have any of that money available? There is money, there is drug forfeiture money available. However, drug money in that manner can be used to supplement the budget, but not supplant the budget. It's illegal. I actually had to do a justification on that, on how we spent our money. So if the mayor or the council was saying, can you spend your drug money on buying cars, my answer would be no. We can't. We can get away with it once in a while, but it's, it's not going to happen. No. Well, let me ask another question. Are you pretty much satisfied? Well, because there's only these two vehicles available, you're going to be buying SUVs from now on. It certainly looks that way so I don't far. see any reason why you would. I, I agree. Unless there are some yeah. effect they find later. I agree with you. It's a much oh more God. versatile vehicle. It's more, so it's it's more reliable one. for this community. I'd like this. Weather. Probably this were terrible. I won't be here. The next one the idea is yeah. just try to set something up so that the Absolutely. council is looking next Absolutely. When we get one, I'll notify the council. You're more than welcome to come over at any time and uh, take it for a spin around like you did with the, uh, the Crown Vicks. Dan, you'd like that one. No. <laughs> He's a Crown Vic guy. We'll let back. you turn on the lights. Only if you put me in the back. <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve this if we're at that point. I'll, I'll second it. I'll make this comment that I want to thank the chief. Actually, the questions I had were all answered fairly effectively. I know at City Council the issue of the drug forfeiture money is going to come up. Mm -hmm. uh, I expect it to come up. Yep. And uh, so, we'll bring it. 
Sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. Having a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. I'll set you. Go buy them. Even though the dog is probably waiting for you. What are we doing next? We're, we're going to move on to Barry's um, computer capital expense, twenty-seven thousand. You guys already talked about. We this. talked about this also, and um, uh, Councillor Cobb uh, had a couple of questions, I believe, on that. And I had one. Uh, my one question, Barry, and I read your your uh, thing you sent on email, and you gave us a copy. I thought it was very good. But you you did away with the switches or. Uh, uh, in the initial proposal, it looked like you were looking yeah, we for something. Them this year. You don't need them. Is, is, and again, I know nothing about major compu computers like that. But I was, I was wondering with two different like modules, is, is, is you have that yeah, that's they, not they really have nothing. They're to connected to this, right? But not but something that's well. The switches in the future, with mass broadband initiative with the fiber going to western. We will need new switches. But that's not going to happen. In probably the for another year. And that's something I'll probably put in for next year. Okay. Uh, just because I, I know uh, Councillor Risk wasn't here last uh, meeting, could you just sort of give them a quick overview of what, what we're doing with the system? In other oh, words, sure. what, what it, uh, I know it's part of like two different right. sides. We have actually two different network domains, almost identical. One's in this building, one's in that building. They're, they're separate for different reasons. And the, 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 the servers I run downstairs, uh, they're getting old. In the software I was from 2003 is one of the servers. And it's time. It's time to uh, update it. Really should have been done probably last year, but I didn't put in because there was no money last year or the year before. So this project's this, the servers are getting old. Two of the servers are about seven years old. They're on a warranty, but they're on borrowed time. And what this will do is replace two servers in each domain and upgrade the software to uh, Microsoft Server 2012 Standard Edition. So the, the money is really in hardware, software, and, uh, in, in the labor to go from one domain to another. So it is a lot of work, and it's in two different ways. And this, this is current stuff, right? Pardon me? You're not buying stuff that was last year's model. You're buying whatever oh, yeah, is it's current, current, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, well, I, I, no, computer systems, it's far, but tomorrow it's no good anymore. Well, the hardware is that way, but the software really isn't. I say 2003, and it sounds ancient. It really isn't. A lot of places still use 2003. Oh, I know that. Um, 2012 is brand new. Are you able to upgrade this? Is there any upgradeability concluded in the in the purchase? The in other words, you can upgrade it for a small amount of money online. Software is not upgradable the same way PC is. Okay. It's, it's a major. That's why I asked. Yeah, yeah it's a major. I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And another part of this is virtualization, which is it's not new, brand new technology, but it's it's been around for at least ten years. But you're really creating servers on a server like a, if you think of your pc is a, is a box with and it runs the way it runs you could create 10 of those separate ones on it is it's, it's only limited by the amount of memory and space you have on it but you can create those on a virtualized server and run them you wouldn't even know that that you were connected to that and think you're connected to a box but you're really connected to this virtualized uh, environment and Does that, this that opens up good possibilities for us to stop buying servers all the time you just create them on there you probably already have this and i'm just curious uh, it's not really connected but is the software we run now all based server based or is it still individually loaded onto computers like the well the databases or the stuff. Oh no, they're all server. Yeah. They're all server based. Yeah, they since I've been here. So they are. Yes. So that you don't have individual programs on individual computers. They're all tied into the oh, server. Microsoft right? Office, things like that. But smaller ones, but not the big no, ones. No, all, all the major ones are all on server. Are server based. Yes. And this will improve that capability. Yes. No, that's and I'm all for this. <laughs> this is a small building. Do you utilize uh, roaming profiles? No. No. Okay. It's a small building. I just thought I'd ask. The, uh, actually, the, the big question I had was trying to sort out where you, where you came up with the number. 
It's very clear. It's all highlighted in the album list. <laughs> and I do so you don't have a question though. So I don't have any, I don't have <laughs> I have to delete else. that. Ah, <laughs> what, what, if we didn't approve this, Barry, what, what's the perils to the system? I mean, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, it just, just function or failure at all? Failure. I mean, this is, um, I'm not saying it's going to fail. No, no, I'm not. Right. Yeah, come fair. back again next year. <laughs> <laughs> but it, um, it's, it's getting old. I, I, I believe, especially in IT software, you need to be proactive rather than well, reactive. I, I agree with Don't you. wait until it fails to fix it. Because you know, and, and, and everything we do now is based on computers. We wouldn't be able to put our tax bills out if we didn't come out. <laughs> then we wouldn't have any money and Barbara wouldn't get paid and you'd never want so to do that. The, the, follow, the, the follow-up question to me is always one, and, and you can think about this, is I always look for ways to use technology to improve productivity. How does this do that for, for, for your group? Your time is limited. This is helping or something. Um, not not so much. It, this is really replacing an old system. The virtualization. Uh, this is a first phase of virtualization. Yeah. Uh, it can stay at the first phase, but a second phase would would bring in different software, we, and it's something that will happen in, in the future because this is where technology goes with uh, mobile devices, which Dan is using right there. People, uh, uh, with virtualization, it's a much more secure way of coming into the network. Um, it's a secure way of access. Yes, and, and it's good, and it's going to just be more and more as we move along. Now, th this is a, a quick aside. Uh, you know, a lot of the seniors at the admissions center are always hitting me up on because they know who I am now. Is, uh, when, when, when are we going to get, uh, I was going to say, a Wi-Fi connection? Oh, it's, uh, I believe uh, Linda approved it yesterday. Excellent. Yeah, for the cafe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, uh, Innovative Business Systems Solutions on Northampton Street. That's where this quote came from for this project. But they quoted one for her, too. She has a grant money to pay for it. And I called her yesterday and said, uh, yeah, Seth from Innovative sent her an email. She needs to respond to it. And that's the acceptance of the quote. Yeah. And then they'll Does she have a budget to pay for it? Yes. Well, she got grant money. I'm not sure how she does. Because there are two levels there. This one is the what the seniors use, and this one Linda will use. Her use because of the confidential information and the right. city information. It's secure. We would need right. to be a lot more secure. And, and, uh, that's interesting. That's, that's a much higher cost level. Because of that. Brings up a question I actually thought I would ask. This is all wireless based. A lot of our, a lot of our stuff is the virtualization and the network. No, that's not really. It's, this isn't really wireless. So it's all wired. Yes. And my reason for asking is, if it's wireless, what's the security like? No, this is uh, this. This isn't changing anything in, internally. All right. It's, but I'm I'm just imagining a newer server would have better security problems. Oh yes, yeah. It, it's it's actually a uh, whole more modern. When I said it's a, it's the second phase, that's money for this second phase of uh, VMware, it's called, and it, Citrix sells it all. So it, it's totally secure. It's it's built it's built just for that. It uses one port, and um, the, the whole idea is is for people to be able to remote in very securely. And people internally, myself. Yep. can monitor it and it's, it's happening. But and that's addition. that's another phase no, of no. virtualization. Yes. Any additional questions? I'll, I'll, move the motion. The, I'll move that we accept the appropriation as second requested. We have a motion to second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I guess it's made enough. Thank you. Thanks, Barry. It's not very good to see you again. <laughs> On our agenda, we're actually going to move down to the very last item, uh, interdepartmental transfer. Well, you know, Dan, you, you, you want to do that because I have two things. You so sure? Because it, it may be a while because I don't know that we haven't discussed that at all, Barbara. Well, we haven't discussed it. Yours either. either. So, okay. Yeah, I don't, you know, because okay. I have two things and they only have one. Where, where are we going? Then I guess we're going to go to uh, supplemental appropriation number A, which is the $20,000 to fund installation of a new boiler at the mm -hmm. Emily Willis and Library. This is a CPA request. Mm -hmm. Um, I did give 
Was it approved by the CPA? It was approved by the CPA. Unanimous. Unanimous. Seven to zero. I, I, I just read the damn thing. <laughs> see that. Uh, there were some questions. Um, in fact, I was one of the votes, and I did say I would uh, vote for it as a CPA member, but refocus on it on the finance. Um, uh, I think if there were any questions that were asked in CPA, a little was the um, uh, amount of contribution. I, I think the whole system is. I know you had like four quotes, and you took like a second quote, which was around twenty-four thousand. Right, and then you had. I think it was uh, around twenty-four. So the library was hoping for some grants or to fund about four thousand of it, as I recall. So right. what's the total cost of the weather replacement? Twenty-four thousand. It's not a. That may not end up being the total cost. It's it's, it's a estimate or a quote. Well, depends right, on what's the total because it's public estimate money. Our bidding process. Do we end up finally getting? It, so the, if the total estimated cost is forty four, we're providing twenty. No, twenty four. In other words, the estimates came in between. You could t correct me if I'm wrong. Like around twenty two or three to twenty eight or yeah. something like that. So they're looking for twenty. From us. From us. CPA. From the CPA. That's what I'm saying. So right. what's the total cost? Is like 28? Like 28 maximum, but I think the one they were looking at was 24, but I think they... 24 is the lowest one, and right. 29 is the highest one. Right. So, so 24. where would you get the rest of the money that you said? Well, we would, we would supply the rest of it. So grants or whatever the library we, has. We are from our endowment fund. Okay. So I don't know if you've been briefed. I'm the one that actually brought up the hard question. Is uh, we're generally... Well, there are very few exceptions, but generally not to practice of providing, like in this case, a matching amount. That's where we're, we're doing the 80% and you're doing the, the 20%. I, I gave you that. That's why the question was, yes. the new stuff. Uh, and of course, everybody knows you have an endowment. There's a whole world. That's why the question was, why are we contributing more? Yeah, more well, well, our part may be more because we don't know if they find something wrong in there, you know, besides what they could see. If the control system has to be updated, we have that real sort of that. The only thing is to get the boiler and the asbestos and stuff out of there in the oil tank. Okay. And the other reason was because, uh, in my mind, I know you're going to get some energy savings in doing this, and it only makes sense to do it. The city doesn't see we any benefit from that, but the, the, it's the library association that reaps all the benefit from the savings. And that's the, the pushback for trying to. Well, well, I see the city is benefiting because if we are if we are able to replace the spoiler um, with the new gas heater, um, the savings that we reap from that, we're hoping that we can extend our hours, which opens it up to the public more. Um, to me, that's how the, it affects the city. Um, I guess this, this yeah. if I can interject, I think Councilor Cobb is referring to city government or the city taxpayers versus not the city as a whole mm -hmm. yeah. if, I could, if I understand you I don't necessarily agree with him but I think that's what he meant mm -hmm. I just wonder where there's nothing in the CPA that says that we're not allowed to fund an entire project there's nothing in the law there's nothing in our rules you're correct that's why I said and that's why the CPA did this at 20,000 they didn't have to say 20 from us and 20 from them there's no law that says that and we've done projects at that tax I, for one, have no problem because the benefit to our youth and our city is enormous. I, I do have, and it's more to the law, and you may know this, but is the CPA law, it does allow for the repair of mechanical systems versus historic preservation, which is repairing, we did repair your windows and things a couple years ago. Yes. So how does the law relate to that? Is mechanical the, systems I, is part of the, I mean, I'm glad. Yeah. If the law allows it, it's, I'm glad, because that's all part of the building. I'm very clear that I, that I believe this is a capital expense. It doesn't matter that it's mechanical or not. That, that did come up. The architecture did it that come did up come in up the at meeting? the meeting. And okay. in other words, was it maintenance? Because if it's maintenance, it can't be funded. If it's a capital project, it can. We're replacing all uh, the things. mayor's viewpoint right. and the planners, or at least the assistant planners, and they talked to the CPA. Um, 
Boston or the Boston people, right? And they said that there's no problem. It's a capital. If it's a capital expense, it's okay. Right. And they do. He do have the stuff from that that it's on the historic. Yeah. Yeah. That, that is important. Historical society too. Wasn't, huh? there, wasn't there a furnace of the historical society? Who, I think we've done it before, but I just wanted to refresh my memory. That was the. Uh, uh, that was well, the. Another thing too is if we get if we can save any money by not buying twelve thousand dollars a year for oil. Half of that we can open up Saturday morning to get to keep the people you know, for four or five hours with them saving from what we make. I know. But the root of the debate is not because I'm a mean person. I have people calling me all the time, especially about the use of CPA funds, and because they truly believe that when they voted for CPA, the things that weren't included. Like today, they would not vote for CPA the surcharge right. because of the affordable housing, because of the recreation. Yeah, but that was all part of it originally. No, it wasn't. Affordable housing. No, it wasn't. Yes, it, it was. came later. Yes, it was. That was always one of them. No, it came later. It came several months later. So, the way it is now, it came later. So, anyways, okay. uh, I'm gonna change my. So they always look for how is this going to preserve our community, and uh, uh, I know I get some tough questions. So, don't get me wrong, I'm a supporter of this. And that's why I asked the question, so I have some ammo when they call me, I have something I can do that. Okay, the one thing is there's an oil tank in the cellar. And who knows how long that's going to last. If that leaks, that means digging up and jacking up the whole library to get all the dirt that's been polluted on the and so part of this lab's that you And then, it, then, then, it, then it preserved the historical building, too. Yeah. Are we replacing the oil tank with this? Yeah. Everything's going out. The yeah. oil tank's going, too? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good news. It's going to go all gas. You're going to gas? Yeah, gas is right there. The line's right there. Oh, it's it's absolutely more in favor of this now. Uh, uh, about 40 years. It, yeah. In 60-something, that was changed. So we're pretty sure that the tank isn't leaking. No. There's nothing leaking yet. Thank God. Keep uh, our fingers crossed. And there's gas. There's gas on both sides of the building, on Main Street and on, on Park Street. In fact, on Park Street, they ran from in front of the library. They extended that line down to the safety complex here a couple of years ago. Have you had any uh, discussions yet with, uh, uh, I still call it uh, Bay State Gas, but it's now well, the, the, uh, the heating contract has said they'll handle it. They'll handle it. But they, I mean, they don't have a problem with no. Uh, I will say, I, I looked through here and I I, uh, I know there is a, a, a letter from Mr. Boyle supporting the project and there was also, I, I don't see the other one, uh, but our, the, our health agent also weighed in yeah. um, stating that there were, um, she was a little concerned about the old system with some fumes and there is, I guess, some, asbe asbestos. some asbestos. Uh, and the children's library. And it's in the children's is there children's asbestos abatement necessary? I, in this? Yes. As a part of the cost? Yeah, that is included. It. Yeah. This thing's pretty cheap. I know. With all that, for 24 grand, They're that's They're removing the boiler and everything. Who's doing that one price? Well, we no, it's in here somewhere. So far, Wilson was the lowest one. Right. I know the, uh, and, and this is something, if if we approve it, you'd have to down the line um, uh, look at I know the mayor at some point made the thing that the city might have to weigh in on who. The city might have to actually uh, uh, provide, yeah, yeah, because yeah. it's the use of public funds, the city may have to provide you guidance on how to actually. How to, how to put it out to get through the well, state yeah, procurement with the rate, with the, the goal of jobs. Make sure the prevailing wage just, all just so that you know you know. In fact, it has to go through the mayor's appropriation process because, although it's CPA funding and we approve it, you still have to do all the purchasing. Right. And he'll make sure that it's legal. I did have some good at that. No, we've been through that before for the roof. Right, you had to do the roof last year. I, I did have one person approach me, said at the, uh, and maybe you can clarify it, and maybe it's the boiler, I mean the uh, oil tank. Somebody at the historical meeting said the boiler, the oil tank came up, and they thought you were looking for money for a new oil tank, and they couldn't understand why you would be looking for a new oil tank if you're putting in a gas system. So I assumed that they must have been talking about you were going to remove the old oil tank. Everything's going, if we get gas, the boiler, the tank. Because that's what they, they must have misunderstood what it was. They were thinking that. It up space, too. Yes. Well, a lot of space. Much needed space. <laughs> Much needed. Are you pretty, uh, you know, if, if. If if we go if it has to be bid out at uh, you know prevailing union wage and, and the project was moved into the you know the low 30s say 
would you have sufficient funds uh, to complete the project? I mean, so, I mean, you're willing to cover that? I mean, or to, Anything else? No, I'm good. Councilor no, Risk? No, very, very important. I'll entertain a motion. Mm -hmm. Let me write that. What did you just ask? Can they fund if, if like, prevailing wage increase? Increase. The answer, yes. Out of the endowment, correct? Would that be able to fund it? Have, have you so looked for. Um, you wouldn't be coming back to the CPA for more money. Have you looked for any grants or anything? Is there anything available? Well, or any we're energy we're energy credits get, or they say we should be able to get some money from the energy saving from and the gas company or the energy, energy credits yeah. from you might get a couple thousand a yeah. couple thousand dollars they said anyways. but not till after the project's finished yeah, doesn't the planner help with cpa grant searches doesn't she the planning department days we do whenever the cpa is involved they're also helping well, with grant, yeah, grant yeah. then the assistant planner has assistant been working planner. with the what, that's what i'm saying planning department I'll move that we approve. I'll second. Okay, having a motion and a second on the table, is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Now, Anything Barbara? for the kids in the seat? Do you have to do, Barbara? <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thanks. Well, thank you. So that's a word. Well, well, I mean, obviously, it's not going to help you this because uh, the heating season is pretty, hopefully, pretty much over. Although I don't know, we've never. So where are we going? To? We'll give you plenty of time to get it set up for density next. shelving. Is that what we're doing? Well, we're going to do the election first because then we're going on a field trip. Oh, yeah. <laughs> where do we have to go on a field trip? Downstairs. I don't want to go anywhere. <laughs> hey, how do you spell okay. drug you. Yep. interdiction? Okay. Drug interdiction funds. My spell check doesn't know what this word. What is it? Interdiction. No. When. When he drug interdiction, the chief had drug interdiction. Drug forfeiture. He had drug forfeiture. I thought interdiction was a word. Never heard of that word. Apparently, spell check doesn't either. Okay, so it's me. Forfeiture. Drug, say fund. drug fund. Drug forfeiture funds. They they know what that is. Now. <laughs> So what are we going to do first? Uh, we're going to do the uh, interdepartmental transfer. Oh. That's the last. Uh, it's the last item on the agenda. Interdepartmental transfer of six thousand dollars to pay for the cost of the April thirtieth uh, special elections. If special we state. say no, does that mean we don't have to East vote? East Hampton can't vote. Yeah. Uh, I don't think anybody's going to complain. It's only it. we'll, six thousand. We'll, we'll see how many people have ten thousand signatures today. Was oh yeah. The, it, yes. Yeah. We'll see I, how many. I will say this. Yeah, of course, this was unexpected. Uh, we'll also say that I was actually kind of taken back by the little bomb also. Yeah, I thought it would be well, 10. Well, what did I do with the damn appropriation? Well, I looked at how much yeah. I have. First of all, let me say is we may not need it at all. And Why is that? Well, if you wish, you can do it. I'm looking for it. No, let, let me explain that. Well, at our last conference, um, the state auditor, who is a very impressive woman, by the way, I don't have it. Um, spoke, and they... Suzanne Baum? Yes. Um, I vote for it. So maybe I should first say that for every state election, whether it's primary or an um, uh, election, we get a certain amount of money back. for extended polling hours, which was something that came in before I even started. So we get that before This is every it if you want to read it. Yeah, it's long, but you can okay, read it later. Me. That's all right. Go ahead, Margaret. Go ahead. So before every primary and election, we get we get extended polling hours money. It's supposed to be for three hours, I guess. Like way back when, they wanted the polls to open at 7 rather than 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. So every, we get that from the state before every election. And Susie and Bump, the state auditor, she came to our conference, and she said, um, the last time we had a special election for Kennedy's vacancy, we, we got um, money afterwards. It came, you know, we were, we put up the money in front and then we were reimbursed later. But um, she realizes that there's some, especially the small towns, that have a hard time fronting the money. So, so they have already gone to the state legislature with the money, amount of money, using the 2009 with a bit of inflation thrown in there. Um, it's, it, it's already in front of the legislature um, to be approved for the two elections. Eight. Seven million nine. Yeah. It's already been approved by them. No, it's, it went to them. But they have to approve, approved. it. Approved. It says approved in this. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, you have two letters there. The second letter says it was approved. Yeah, well, anyway. it, it went to them and it has to go into a supplemental budget or, you know, I don't know how they all work it there. So um, it, it is hoped that we will get this money ahead of the two elections as part that's of the expended portfolio. Yeah, then that's this amount of money. Right. So, so my mayor, uh, the mayor suggested that I only ask for April um, because, I mean, even hopefully by April we may already have it. But if we don't, at least we'll have enough to get through April. Bottom line is we're not paying for this ever. They're going to give us the money for both elections. No, they well, won't be you know, hopefully. It's not 100 percent. Nothing's nothing's 100 percent. You know. They were going to give um, us half of the window, too. Yeah, I, I looked at my budget, what I have <laughs> left. Um, the state does pay to program one of our machines, the um, uh, dis disability machine that nobody ever uses. They pay for that. So we just have to pay the scanners, you know, that you <coughs> Uh, it's only going to be one question, you know. So I, I think what I have left <coughs> in my budget, I can handle the programming. Um, this would cover the election workers. A little extra, um, a little extra cost this year is that because of the whole Connecticut thing, the school department's requiring us to have a police officer in school buildings if if an election is held during. Because all those. Now, what we're going to do in April is um, <coughs> we're going to be voting. <coughs> it will be the very last day that we will own the ice cream. It will not be given to the contractor until May <coughs> 1st. So precinct 3 and 4 will vote one last time at the old high school. Will there still be? And the kids will be in the new high school at that time. So we only so have, have an empty room with all your stuff in. We'll have, we'll have the gym and we'll, yeah. So everybody will be going into the old high school for one last hurrah, and then the next day it all starts to Tear it down. take the asbestos down. So, yeah. but by doing that means we don't have to have a police officer in high school. So we'll just need a police officer at White Now the bad thing is, is because of all the snow days. Look at the <coughs> Nothing really matters for this. Is um, last day of school right now is June 25th, which is the day of the election. So it's going to be half day of school, which can be very complicated in the new high school, which Pardon? next thing yeah. is that, um, yeah, it's going to be tricky because the old school is going to be there. And so we're going to have to go around the school and there's going to be kids, but maybe not too many because it's the last day. But I have to, I have to give you the heads up that um, I've done some serious consideration and been talking to some people about the possibility of uh, moving all the precincts, all the voting to the high school. The new high school? Mm -hmm. Yep. In the future? Yep. Will that, you know, will that, will that save money? It'll be, it, it would. Well, it would only mean, well. You don't have two buildings open. You don't have two no buildings open. open. It would be wonderful for me. It would be wonderful for the Is there enough parking? Um, if you look at the new parking, I, I looked at parking? the pictures and it looks okay, but I think until the school's down, we really won't know oh, for no. sure. Um, if there isn't school, which I, I think usually when we know about the elections ahead of time, the school been, has been pretty good about not having school. But they haven't these, had school. They, they do. Like they've started to be able to close. Like for November, there won't be school. Left. And don't they sometimes have their like professional development well, days on see, those? That the good thing about having us all at the high school is because the last time they had a professional day at Whitebrook, it was a small election, and I went up to Whitebrook, and there were oh, cars it was, it was, everywhere. They had a full district professional oh, so they, day at Whitebrook, and there was like no place to park. So they brought people in from other. So so now if we're all at the high school, they can do the professional day at Whitebrook. And I mean, do you, can you do that on your own, or do you need council no, you, approval? You, you, you're going to need to move to move, move the precincts. Yeah. Yeah. I've already, you know, Mike. I told Mike. I've talked to the school department. Talked to the janitors. So talked to a lot of other clerks um, who do it and love it. Would that be for the? Special Everything. election to elect a senator. That's no. when you think you'd do it. Or no. say maybe November would I be the first November. Because we we won't have the parking lot. And and visually, oh, that's true. Because this is in June. The summer, is the June the election? Yeah. So I also need a little bit of storage space. Um, I I think there probably will be room, but uh, until we get into the school and we see how much room there is, until the parking school is down and we see what the parking looks like. You know, there's going to be that two in and out. It's not going to be, that's going to reopen, so the traffic flow should be better. But I've talked to a lot of clerks who have 
more than five precincts in the years, one location. And you know, we, we get a, it always happens. You know, people go to go to high school and they're told that they belong in Whitebrook, and then they get to Whitebrook and they're told they should be in high school. How would you do it? You just have separate little yep. put walls up yep. between. It is huge. Yeah, I know. The only it. the only problem with the um, with the gym that I can see is that the electrical outlets are on one end or the other end. So we're going to have to have a lot of cores. But but that, that that's not until November. I just. Well, obviously we need to do this. So, so we're just, just one more question, Barbara. It, yep. So if if we don't get any state money, if say the worst happens, you'll be back for yep. another six for the yep. this for the primary and another six for the right. I I mean I don't know how they can. No. I mean I really it, this is a state mandate this election. I I really can't understand. I can't believe that the state would not. Whether we get it ahead of time like we'd like or afterwards. You have to have the funds in place, well, even if we don't yeah. get the money out. But what I'd like to suggest is that maybe um, you not schedule a public hearing on this until the second meeting in April. Okay. Because okay. by then, I mean, maybe I'll have already had the money and I'll say, I, mean, I don't need this. But if we do it for the second meeting in April, you know, then I'll be all set. You, you would want it the second. That's the that would be yeah. just before the election. Right. So. I mean, we could go for the day after. You know, you could even push it that far if you want to go to the first meeting in May, which is I think, no, I think the day after. No, second, I should, let's get it. Uh, I'd rather do it before, before you need it. Right. If you need but it. but if we wait until the second meeting in April, if I found out that it's going to come ahead of time, then I'll just ask for this to be withdrawn. Okay. Then we have to wait for the cash in hand. Well, trust that it, the it checks in the mail from no, the state? No, com it comes electronically. If Melissa comes in and tells me we've got the There's money. Well, that's what I want. I want Melissa to tell you you have the money before you say. Yeah, well, it comes electronically. So. You will remind me of this public hearing. Mm -hmm. Well, why don't well, we set even, it? You can even why set, why don't set it. Okay, set it. Okay, and then, then, I'll, then I'll you'll remind me. Okay. That we sounds can always cancel. That's something. So I'll, I'll set it in motion just to recommend approval of this request as presented. Second. Motion is second on the table. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Zero. Do we want to go downstairs now? Yeah, I'm just. Uh, let, me just let me kind of just give you the general uh, rundown of what. This is for the show? Yeah. Why don't you just trust her? Why don't you have to get out? Well, because. She requested it. Just because. Only take a few minutes. I'll try not to. Um, well, for, first of all, I want to say that um, my request that I gave to the mayor on the capital projects, I, I kind of tweaked it a little bit to try to get the biggest bang for an hour. Um, to try to to try to get as many shelves as I can, which to, to help deal with the problem downstairs without having to um, disrupt. <laughs> Some of the things that are going to be harder to deal with. Uh, there's a lot of file cabinets down there. That this, most of the school department-wise that are going to be kind of tricky to, to deal with. Yeah. Um, the, the shelving that I'm, I'm going for this time will, will address the box problem that you'll see, but it will mean that we won't have to deal with all those file cabinets this time. This project really can be done in several phases, so this one is kind of phase one. It is, and so is it five thousand dollars per phase? Um, no, I think other. I mean, I don't really know how much the rest will be. It depends. There's a lot of variables, and it can be done in bits and pieces. What are you actually going to store there? I know it's not historic records because uh, we did that. Well, with, uh, maybe we should go downstairs. Okay. Let me just uh, because we're being taped. Uh, let's see. Okay. Yep. Let's do the little tape. Well. Um, yeah. I have, I have to yeah. Yep. Right here. This, this is kind of Okay, kind so of you, you're going to get box storage. Yep, like that. 
that's okay. going to be like up against the wall, and then there's going to be some that are because it of said floating. two here, the two here say box storage. Yep. One two hundred ten units, one fifty four units. Yes. And then the other one is going to be this. Is, this is kind of just showing because it's double. It's going to be there's going to be access from one side or the other. It's going to be in. But you're going to be so box storage in this box. case. It's all it's box shelving to store boxes. Yeah, that? it's all box. Storage. Right, I see. Like like it'd be like that. Like the okay. same thing. Like three. It's going to be wide enough to put three boxes across, and we're getting a little deeper because most of the stuff we have here is copy paper boxes. They're not the standard storage box size, but truthfully, that's, that's what we have. Are you replacing the boxes? No, just the yeah. shelves. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to use the existing boxes, which we're going to see. Well, we're going to look. Right. Going to I, I don't want. What I don't want is for everything down access. there. What I don't want is for everything down there to just go from where it is right now onto the shelves and walk out the door. We, you know, there's a lot of stuff down there that I suspect doesn't have to be kept anymore, and we need to go through and a lot of stuff that doesn't need to be kept. There's a retention schedule that every department should be following every year to weed out things that can be thrown out with permission. So this state. isn't just clerk files. Oh, this is I don't have all departments. All the departments. Yeah, this is there's virtually hardly anything down there that's mine except for some ballots that come and go and some zoning files. This is not not me. <laughs> hardly so any. So just to ask, the weeding out of these files. Who in initiates that? The department heads? Well, um, the stuff that needs to be done that well, we'll see. I've already talked to a lot of this. From the is auditors. there an administrative code that says this is the policy to follow? Oh, well, there's yeah. a state retention. A retention policy, system. but yeah. the it, people that would do it would be the offices involved. Oh, there that have their back. Yeah. And you said auditors have a lot. There's a lot. Yeah. And the school department has a huge amount. Yeah, my concern is that we're saving a lot of oh, yeah. stuff we don't well, have to I, save, and yeah. you need space for new files. Yeah, yeah. It, it, as you all know, it's it's very easy to just throw stuff in a box and put it away and forget about it. And if it's not looking at you in the face, but these, I assume these boxes are properly dated, so you know that this is from 2001. Or there's boxes down there that are so buried, I don't think anybody even knows where they are. But I think if we go down, you'll okay. see what I mean. How long are we going to be gone, Barbara? I can leave the camera on or I can shut it off? Yeah, maybe 10 minutes. Okay. I'll shut it off. off. Say we're going to okay. we're gonna go on a trip, so we have to yeah. shut the uh, camera off and we'll reconvene up are here. Gonna be there. There. I think we got to hit it quick. Anyway, we're back on the tape. We have through our field trip, so we'll call the meeting back to order. I can make a motion on this more to um, Well, I think we should just have, uh, if, uh, uh, just to wrap up, what, what we did is we took a, there's two rooms downstairs, basically we took a, uh, a visual tour and uh, the city clerk explained to us what type of shelving she wanted and, and how it would, would meld. I think all the counselors uh, uh, didn't have too many questions. It, it seems like it's a project, at least in my mind, that's going to make for uh, a lot more organized. organized. I'm doing this for the camera. You're very good. You thought I was just. Uh, it's actually a start in my mind to actually keep our work still, keep our work as organized. Remember, she did say this was a first phase of trying to organize right. what we have down here in boxes. And certainly, some of the boxes look like they're starting to crumble, and uh, you know, wow. certainly we can upgrade it for the, well, the shelving. Yeah. The shelving's in this. So. Uh, that said, I'll entertain a motion. I move we accept. I'll second. Motion a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, the remaining um, items on the agenda, I talked to uh, the DPW Director Kipchinski and said because we had a long night ahead of it that we didn't need him tonight. If uh, I have no questions until he gets here, they're all, I believe, all DPW. The rest of them are all DPWs. Right, so and he said he will him. definitely be at the next meeting. He was willing to come tonight, but uh, are we getting any more? Uh, the mayor. I talked to the mayor before the meeting, and he said that there would be just two um, small items. Well, why don't we make sure we deal with these? All we'll deal with these, with Joe. Right. Do we need a water department too? Um, or is Joe I'll see with Joe. See if Joe can handle them all, or if he wants somebody else, we'll be up to him. Because I do like on item number F. I remember not too long ago where we actually did a uh, third replacement on the right. van. Yeah. So we do that. But I could have a long, long 
could be a different thing. It could be highway on water. <laughs> so I'm going to move. The chair is recommending that we deal with the rest of these items. Right. At the next, next uh, subcommittee meeting when uh, Public Works Director Pipchinski can be here. Uh, you have Councilor Cobb? The, uh, uh, the only uh, little new item I had was uh, a union official at the last city meeting brought up something that to a certain degree, I had that information here, I, I, I use this term loosely, uh, has some merit in that, but I think the numbers uh, that they derived are not as factual as they would like. And I'm looking to see if the committee is interested in having me actually generate a request to actually look at this and break out the myth or the facts, which would be to talk to the auditor and uh, the uh, uh, finance director to see. So you mean about up. the benefits, the 78000 he was talking about? I wasn't here, but you told me the point. Yeah. This is the... Uh, I, mean, I have no problem looking into it. I mean, certainly, if you want to put it on... So I, I, I have would a assume problem would with the method in which we were tapped to look at. I have a problem with that. If, there, if it came to us from the union, let's say the teachers' union, came to us with an official request, can this be looked into, it might help us, or the school committee, I would have no problem. But to come to a meeting and, sit and, and put the president and the council on notice that this is happening and we'd like it look into, to me, that's just not appropriate process, and it, it bothers me because does it set the precedent that whenever somebody wants something done, it's easy. Just go yell at the council and it'll get done, it, it, and they'll do something. Now, I know we want to be there for citizens, and this is a union official, so I'm not really he's not really a citizen, but on the other hand, what about process? Why isn't the school committee, if they're the ones looking for this money, why aren't they asking the question? I, well, I'll put this, I, I, I'm I just saying, saw, I don't know, Justin, because it sounds like you're the uh, school committee meeting where this was brought up. And the, union, the union rep was told to go see the city council. But see, that's wrong. They should be coming to see us. I agree. I, 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 and I'm no, hearing that, I'm not blaming the union rep for coming to see you, but now it looks like we're passing it back. I think we should write a letter to them and say, look, the appropriate process is this is school committee money. You want money to be appropriated, and you're claiming that there's money available in some of these accounts. The teachers' union is claiming this money. Well, then the teachers' union should write a letter to the city council and ask for an official an official investigation, because that's what this is going to be. If we go talking to the auditor and to the treasurer, what's going on? We're investigating this, because somebody from the outside came in and just said, can we investigate it? Is I, I don't know. I'm a little leery about doing that all the time. As a stopgap compromise, do you think it would be appropriate if uh, Councilor Cobb, as president of the council, maybe talk to the uh, chairman of the school committee, Mr. Gunn, and well, he's, not and chair anymore. Oh, he's not chair. Whoever. Well, the new what chair I'm is. saying, but but along those lines, you personally can go talk to Melissa and go talk to the auditor if you feel that it's worth at least asking the question. But I have a problem doing something official without official request from the union. That's that's or fair. Why don't we do it that way? Then? I'll the, do it. You deal with it. I'll and start it first. Right, and I'd like to see the information here. When I when I started looking at some of this information, I couldn't make this out. Didn't didn't Melissa respond to, as she well did. that night? I, I, just I don't know what, what the But not a fit. Like. It was just a lot more. Well, if I were there, I would have said the same thing I'm saying now. I have no problem with this. Put it in writing. Make it official from the union. Not from you. You're a state rep. From the teachers' union. If they want us to look at this, okay. But so I'll, I'll, you know, I'll follow up. It's not an agenda item, but I, I certainly think that I would be willing if you, between you going to them and also maybe to the school committee, at least touch a base with them and say, you know, is this good? Is this what you want? Is I this? am not going to put this on the minutes. And then and you should know that this kind of thing. Joe brought up a good point. We start debating and discussing something that's not on an right. agenda. No one's here from the teachers' union to say to say one about way or the other. So I think so we, should we shouldn't be debating the and merits and, and maybe yeah. having a uh, maybe the meeting. Oh, should I'm, have not, I'm asking. I'm not looking to debate the merits and non-merits. It's right. just what so direction no is to put it on the. On the, on the you know, I'm willing to certainly, I think, have you approach uh, the school committee and, and the I'll, auditor I'll and, and director and see if you feel there at some point after talking to them. If you feel uh, after that that there's something wrong, no. I guess so. But my problem is, why doesn't this come the appropriate channels? Don't you agree, Barbara? You're a process person. Because the appropriate, be appropriate they were chance. told the appropriate channel was to... Well, they were told wrong. Can I 
policy. So uh, the other one is is uh, that's not on the agenda. We have two city council appointments vacant right now. We have one on CPA. And we now okay. have a school committee uh, position vacant. And so if you know of anyone who wants to, uh, who, is, who would like to be on the school committee, or is the CPA doc? Uh, yeah. And or would like to be a member of the CPA. That's the What's the other one? What's the school committee? Someone resigned early from the school committee. Bonnie Katusha. So we don't have to have a special election? No, it's um, it will be a joint conclave. Um, it'll be between a joint appointment between the city council and the school committee. Remember when Bruce Gordon left? To appoint a member. Oh, I remember that. To appoint a member. Why don't we make end. a big? Why don't we get it in the paper somehow? Can we ask Rebecca I, to put well, it in? Well, I no, I, I told her about it yesterday. I was surprised it wasn't in today's paper. I I, I would be very surprised. She if calls it wasn't me all the time. Yesterday. Can you give me a nice quote about Justin? I said, geez, I had to dig deep and I <laughs> gave him a nice quote. So I'll tell her, look it, put this in the paper, no more quotes. <laughs> no, the deadline, on, the quote deadline on the 10 day period is up for receiving applicants. It's March 6th. So it's Can we extend that somehow? Um, I think, I mean, I think for sure if nobody has come forward by then. The school, the school department posts it. So it was. School posted. committee one, but what about CPA? Oh, that's already posted. Yeah, but. What did That's you just say the 10-day thing is? The 10-day for the school committee. So if there's no applicants, yeah, it no can be extended by the school committee. Sure. Yeah, I mean, if there's no applicants, you gotta keep looking. So if you know somebody, okay. we'll yeah. have a name. If, if the process is basically we have to meet in joint open meeting. So that's why I use the term conflict to actually uh, appoint someone for the remainder of the term. And then I mean, this isn't really a finance, this is a, year and a, half. a full council yeah. thing, so do we, um... Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, we have to run for election yeah, the council, again. council, do we, uh, what do, you think about do we advertise term? this? I mean, so that anybody oh, in the general okay. public that so might be interested in being on the school committee would have knowledge that they could come forward and... and do, do we have an obligation to to advertise that there's a vacancy and so someone who um, might be interested and has no... no... I already... I, I told... I told one of the people who were at the hearing the other night, our meeting last week, I told her that almost as soon as I found out about it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure it will be in the paper, and it is posted here, but yeah, it means to be I'm surprised Peter Marks doesn't want to do it. He's a big mouth. There's no reason why he couldn't. Apply. Did you, does, does he I mean, there's no problem for Justin sure to. There would be no problem for Justin or Joe, depending on if you wanted to, to make an announcement at the council meeting. Well, of course, or, or yeah, is it? except for the council meeting. I see it's March after. 6th. I see we got but ten days to. We'll, we'll, I mean, we'll see what has come in um, as of before March 6th. That. I see. If nothing has come in, then yeah, it needs to be. I'm, I'm sure Rebecca's we have. A, have remember that meeting you and I attended? Yes, the large school. group. Right. Okay, anything okay. else? Yeah, I think about that's the, those are just us to say. Uh, yeah, the CPA committee, that one's on these two. Okay, but that wasn't just so. We're adjourning, right? Yep. Motion to adjourn. Uh, I'll second. Okay, all in favor. Aye. Aye.